One of my students asked me recently if there was a systematic technique to solve mechanics problems that involved rotational forces. I thought this was a great subject for a video. So here I am, in front of the camera, ready to show you how to solve these kind of questions in just five easy steps. In order to solve mechanics questions that involve translational forces, the technique also uses five steps. First, you draw a free body diagram. Second, you define some convenient axes. Third, you make a vector sum of the forces in order to find an analytical expression of the net force. Step four, you apply Newton's laws. And step five, you use the equations that you obtain from step three and four to solve your question. This five-step technique is super powerful to solve problems with forces. If you want to know more, you should take the course I produced on this topic. I will put some links in the description. When it comes to questions involving rotational forces, known as torques or moments, the approach is actually very similar. Step 1. Determine where is located the rotational axis, also called the pivot. Step 2. List and write down an expression of the torques applied on the object of interest. For that step, you need to consider the magnitudes of the forces that are applied on the object, the distances between the axis and the point of application of these forces, and the angles formed between the forces and the arm. Step 3. Add the torques like vectors to find an expression of the net torque on the object. Step 4. Apply Newton's laws. The net torque is equal to the product of the rotational inertia of the object and the rotational acceleration. Step 5. Use the equations you obtain from step 3 and step 4 to solve the question. You know, while I'm talking like this, listing the five different steps, I realize it might look quite intense in your perspective. But the technique is actually quite simple. It's actually quite easy to apply. So in order to show you how to do that, how to apply this technique in practice, Let's do an exercise together. You'll see. It's not difficult. OK, what do we have here? We have a plank attached to a pulley. This pulley is on the ground, so you see the plank can rotate like that. At the extremity of the plank, there is attached a rope. The other extremity of the rope is attached to the ground. The point of attachment of the rope on the ground is at a distance from the pulley, which is the same as the length of the plank. The question is, what is the tension in the rope, knowing that the angle between the plank and the ground is 60 degrees? Oof, that looks like a complicated question, right? How do we start? With the steps, step by step. Step number one. Where is the axis of rotation? It's here. So that's pretty straightforward. Step number two. Find an expression of the magnitude of the torques which are applied on the object of interest. So here the plank. If there are torques involved, it means there are forces involved. So what are the forces involved? Well, it has a tension there. The magnitude of the torque due to the tension will be equal to the magnitude of the tension by the distance between the pulley and the point of application of the tension, so the length of the plank, basically, multiplied by the sine of the angle between the tension and the arm, that is, this axis. So how can we find this angle? Well, we know we've got 60 degrees there, so it means that here we have 120, right? This is an isosceles triangle, meaning that two sides of the triangle have got the same length. So we know that the remaining angles need to add to 60 degrees and that they are equal to each other. So we have 30 here and 30 there. That means that the angle between the tension and the axis will be 180 minus 30, which is 150. I don't care if this angle is positive or negative. I just consider the magnitude of the angle here, because I'm calculating here the magnitude of the tension only. So here I want a positive angle between 0 and 180 to have a positive value for the sign. Okay, that's it for tension. What about the force of gravity? 
will have a torque associated with it, right? Where is it? Well, the mass is distributed uniformly, so the center of mass will be in the middle of the plank. That means that the magnitude of the force is mg. The distance between the point of application and the pulley is r over 2. About the angle between the force and the arm, it's this angle. And that's what it'd be. Well, we've got 60 here, and I see a rectangle triangle here. So I've got 90 there, 60 there, I'll have 30 there. If I have 30 there, that means I've got 180 minus 30 here. So that's 150. So are we done now? No. Now, the plank is pushing on the ground. Therefore, there'll be a reaction force of the ground on the plank. But when we are dealing with torques, in that case, we won't care. Because the reaction force will be at the point of contact with the ground, which is also the point of axis of rotation. Therefore, this force, the reaction force, would be passing by the axis of rotation. Meaning that the distance between the point of application of the force and the axis is zero. Therefore, the torque due to reaction would be zero. So we can just deal with these two. Good. So now we have the magnitude of all the torques which are applied on the plank. Step three, find an expression of the net torque. The net torque is the vector sum of all the torques that are applied on the object of interest. So we can write this mathematically like this. Tau net as a vector is equal to tau tension as a vector plus tau gravity as a vector. We will be adding vectors here. So we need to define an axis with a positive direction. But these vectors are rotational vectors. So we need to define a rotational axis and a positive direction. Let's consider that something rotating clockwise would have a positive direction of rotation. Good. Now let's define the magnitude of the net torque. Imagine there would be only tension involved. What would the plank do? It would be pulled back. So it would rotate that way, meaning that it would be rotating in the negative direction of the rotation. That's why we write this minus magnitude of the torque of the tension. What about gravity? Gravity would pull down the plank, therefore make it rotate in the positive direction. So the vector gravity torque translate as a magnitude as plus to g. Now we can put our expression of the magnitude in here. Now that we have an expression of our net torque, we can move on to the next step, step four, which is to apply Newton's laws. The plank is in balance. It's not rotating. Therefore, there's no angular acceleration on the plank. That means that the net torque is zero. Step four, correspond to writing down to net equals zero. Now we have our two expressions, this and this. We can go now to step five, which is to solve. We can write down that minus TR sine of 150 plus MGR over two sine 150 equals zero. I can rearrange this to put this on the other side, and I get that. The R's cancel, the sine 150 cancels, and I've got my tension just being mg over 2, which is 30 by 10 divided by 2, 150 newtons. Oops. Please, ball, don't fall on me. Did you find this video useful? Yeah? So like, subscribe, and smash the notification bell. It really helps me grow the channel and also encourages me to make new videos. In the meantime, I wish you the best and I'll see you soon for the next episode of Physics Made Easy. Ciao.